Senator Kissel. Thank you very much. I, I just want to commend the, the leadership of this committee, uh, Representative Gonzalez, the members of the task force, uh, my leadership, Senator Fasano. This has been a long time coming. And I don't view this particular proposal as, as the end of the road. Uh, but for the last several years, we've had hearings on people that have come and testified before us and said that the system didn't work for them. And I know that we, we pushed last year to establish a task force, and that task force was contentious. Uh, but it was important that we took that step to bring all the stakeholders into one place and have them cobble together a report. And while that report was not unanimous in every respect, there were certainly many areas where they came together, all the members of the task force, and had unanimous recommendations. The, te the hearing yesterday that went from about 10.30 in the morning to quarter to 12, quarter to midnight, I think afforded all of us an opportunity to see that the problems in the system are not just anecdotal. They're not isolated events. Clearly in family court matters, especially when custody is an issue, there's going to be unhappy litigants. But over and over again, what I heard was that there are just some parties that thrive on high stress situations. And unfortunately, what appeared to my eyes was that in many respects, those folks that seem to be the most incalcitrant, the most entrenched, the most uncompromising benefit from the system. And that's just wrong. I do believe, and this is not a slight to the folks that are involved in family law, whether they're attorneys, whether they're judges, whether they're administrators in the judicial branch. There's no way we can paint all of those folks with one broad brush. But it does appear that in those cases where people are taking very strident positions, that we can do a much better job here in the state of Connecticut. Some of those folks that testified yesterday really brought it home to me. Not that I hadn't been aware of this, championing the task force and proposals to reform the system for the last several years. But the information that other states are trying to get their arms around this, other states have been passing reforms, whether it's Kansas, whether it's Maine. The individual that works as a, in a private company that advises law firms as to how they can better do billing and in brought to our attention the fact that other states have done so much more to reform their systems showed me that we need to catch up in this area. There is, I just can't imagine, there's just no way that I can justify any guardian ad litem charging tens of thousands of dollars. They're not social workers, they're not psychiatrists, they may have taken a 30 to 36 hour course, but it doesn't make them PhDs when it comes to child's rights and what's best for children. They're there to assist judges outside of the court setting. But there's just no way they should be being paid huge amounts, $300 an hour or more to sit in court. And that system has just run amok. There are lots and lots of good guardian ad litems. There are lots of lots of good family court judges and family court lawyers. But it does appear to me that over the last several years, in some pockets of our state, it has become a cottage industry to the detriment of litigants, especially those that don't thrive on high stress, but most importantly, it has harmed the children. There's just no way I can believe that forcing people into bankruptcy or foreclosure or wiping out college funds is in any way beneficial to the minor children in a custody fight. There's just no rational basis for this. And I don't care if the Gold Coast of Connecticut is replete with wealthy individuals. That doesn't mean that something that can be done for $5,000 in North Central Connecticut should cost 
$500,000 down in the Gold Coast. That's just not fair to people. It needs to be rationalized. It needs to be brought under control. The parts of this bill that I wish would go further is I do believe that guardian ad litems need a boss, need someone that they can report to and that will hold them accountable. I think this is a great first step. I think it gets us way farther down the road in a short session than I ever thought that we would get. No two ways about it. If you can say that someone is not following code of conduct and ethical standards, then you will have grounds to challenge their behavior. And putting judges in a position where they're going to set up the rules and put up the parameters and hold folks accountable for their billing is a great step forward. But I do see that in a contentious custody battle in particular where one party or another or both are being extraordinarily unreasonable, that there may be some downside to one party or the other raising these issues. We heard time and time again yesterday that people are fearful of having payback, that if they raise questions about bills, that somehow things are not going to be recommended in their favor. And that's a reality. That's why I think other states are way ahead of us when they establish some sort of overarching commission or authority to review these matters in an objective process. We're not there yet. We searched for areas to place guardians ad litem in this entire situation, and we couldn't find a place right now to put that authority. And I think we're going to have to, at some point, get our arms around that. But I think that we're kidding ourselves if they, we think that this is just an aberration with a few disgruntled individuals. I didn't see that. I haven't seen that over the years. At the same time, to paint it with one brush and say that all guardian ad litems, guardians ad litem are bad, that's wrong too. And I thought that the testimony provided yesterday by the uh, legal aid societies from both Hartford and New Haven were extremely informative. They don't really have a big dog in the fight because they have a system where it's being funded through government stipends and then they have other provisions through the Children's Law Center. They get supplemented with grants and things like that. They offered some really good insights as to how we can make the law even better. And I don't think that we're all the way there yet, but we're far further down this road than I thought we would ever get. So for those of you, my colleagues, that feel that the system's broken, I agree wholeheartedly. For those folks who came here and waited for hours and hours and hours to testify yesterday, I agree with your concerns. For those guardians ad litem from my district and, and the rest of the state that have contacted me and the family court lawyers and the members of the bar and the judges, I also see your side of the story. But at the end of the day, there's just no two ways about it. We can do much better. And if there's one area in our in jurisprudence where you know we hear time and time again people's worst times are when they're in the court system nine out of ten folks don't want to be there and it's not the highlight of their life but when you're fighting over your child and there are no allegations of neglect or abuse then I think we need to take a step back we need to take a step back and recognize that there were some suggestions made as to joint custody and you know the presumption that parents have a right to be parents and we need to move from that paradigm rather than soon as a guardian ad litem lands into the scene that now everybody's got to jump through a million hoops at three hundred dollars an hour so that they can just reacquire the rights that they had when their child was born I really think that maybe we need to move into the 21st century at a much more rapid rate. We can do better in Connecticut, but I commend the leadership of this committee and all the other folks, my ranking member Rosa Remembus, and again, all the others for working so hard on this issue. Vice chairs as well. It's not easy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.